So this question says the function f is defined by f of x equals a square root x plus b, where a and b are constants. In the xy plane, the graph of y equals f of x. Anytime I see in the xy plane, I'm immediately thinking, hey, maybe I should plug in a picture here. So pi, p, and actually draw a graph. Um, and let's see, what do we know about this graph? So we know that it passes through the point negative 24, 0. So if this were negative 24, we'd have a point right there at negative 24, 0. And we know that at f of 24, it's less than 0. So if this were the point positive 24 here, we know that our graph here is going to be somewhere down in the negative um, portion here. Um, so that's, that's really all we know about our graph. And then we see the question says, which of the following must be true? Okay, so must be true is very important. That means not could be true, but has to be true. So let's think about this from the graph standpoint. Does it have to be true that f of 0 equals 24? So that would be here. Does it have to be true that our graph is there, given what we see visually here? I would say no, right? There's no, I wouldn't say I have to, the graph has to go up there and touch at that y-intercept um, in order to make it back down here into the negative of the graph by the time it reaches uh, x equals 24. So I'm going to say a is wrong. It doesn't have to be 24. How about choice b, f of 0 equals negative 24? So that takes us down here to negative 24 on the y-axis. Does it have to be true that I have a point here on the y-axis at negative 24? Um, no, there's no reason. There's nothing here provided in the visual that I have that would make that true, so that's gone. Okay, how about choice C? A is greater than B. Okay, so the graph doesn't help me with that. So I must need to go back to this function. What can I do with this function? Well, I can start plugging things in. I know that when X is negative 24, so let's just do this. If I have F of X equals A, I know that when X is negative 24, so put negative 24 plus B, this is telling me that my F of X should be equal to zero. So how would that happen? How would F of X be equal zero? Only two ways, either A equals zero, Right? Because if this were 0, then when I multiply 0 times a radical, I would get a 0 for my f of x. So that would work. And another way would be if b equaled 24. right? Because then I'd have negative 24 plus 24 here. And that would be 0. And I'd just go the reverse. If that's 0, then 0 times a is 0. So these are my two options based upon that. How about here? So here says f of 24. So that means that f of x equals a, and then when x is 24, so I have 24 plus b, basically we're saying that that has to be less than 0. So how would that happen? Well, I can't have a negative in the radical, right? So that's, that's not going to be where my negative value comes from. My negative value must only come from the a value here. And again, I'm saying negative because that's what less than zero means. If you're less than zero, it means you're negative. So that tells me that my a must be less than zero. That's the only way to make this statement true. If a is negative, then yeah, right? When I multiply it by whatever the square root of 24 plus b is, which we know will be positive, then overall we'll have a negative value. So now I have some, I have some conflicting information because here I have as a possibility a equals zero. Here I have as a requirement, A is less than zero. So I'm going to go with the requirement versus the possibility. So I'm going to cross out A equals zero, okay? Because again, A has to be less than zero. So then here's what I have. I know that B is equal to 24, and I know that A is less than zero. So that means I know that my function, F of X, is equal to A square root X. Again, I know that B is 24, so plus 24. And I know that A has to be less than zero. So let's deal with that information now. So choice C says A is greater than B. Well, I know that A is negative and I know B is positive 24. So no, A is not greater than B. So that's gone. And then choice D, A is less than B. Well, yeah, I know that A is negative, right, from here. And I know B is equal to 24 from here. So definitely A is less than B. So there's my, you know, that must be true. There's no doubt about it. There's no question about it. A has to be less than B. So that's the right answer. I think also we could have used decimals here just as you know a way to save some time and plug this in with a slider on A. But you know we would have still had to do some work here to figure out that B is 24. And with that information, I think you would then be able to figure out 
and really and knowing a is less than zero even right so i'm not sure how much time actually this would save you but it would give you a visual on the a answer choice a and answer choice b here but we could just draw it right so my drawing helped me to know that a and b are crossed out and then all this work here helped me to know that c is crossed out and that d is the correct answer